And so this is that step that I was mentioning just now around interviewing subject matter experts and how you can kind of leverage them, their own audience to get more survey responses and then create also obviously that mutual benefit for them, right? Of like driving out uh, brand awareness for them, helping them succeed in the process. So it's a really cool kind of duality there that you can strike with uh, folks and influencers in your space. So here's an example of uh, a quote that we got for the study here from Brian Dean. So if you're in the SEO space, you've probably heard of him. Um, sold Backlinko to SEMrush. He's doing some other cool stuff around exploding topics. So we just reached out to him and connected and uh, started to share a little bit of our, our insights into the study so far that we had collected. Shared him a little bit of our background process here and just got his, his raw thoughts on that, right? So we, we prefer to send them the survey data uh, raw as quickly as you can. So collecting some of that initial data early on and then going to your subject matter experts and saying, hey, here's the data we've already found here. Super interesting stuff. Thought you might want to take a look. That really is your hook to get in the door, right? You don't want to necessarily jump in there and ask for favors immediately. You want to lead with some interesting and valuable data, and then they can help you compound those results. And so what we did there was reached out to Brian, kind of connected with him, shared some of the data with him, uh, got an interesting sort of quote from him in the end here where he shared a little bit of that, helped us promote the study. We helped promote him as well as the quotes all around social media. So it's really a win-win for folks to help them get more brand awareness. They can kind of shed light on a study here. And again, if that study does really well, they end up reaping a lot of rewards from that. And then you'll have someone that you can connect with in the future to do even more studies. And so it's a really great way to, to bolster that study and also helps you uh, basically uh, build more of that credibility and authority, right? So if uh, you're going to pitch a journalist in your space and you've got a quote from a really, really big influencer or someone that's done something cool or runs a cool company in your space, that's really great fuel for a journalist seeing that to say, okay, this is not just some like random study that's like maybe not even real. This is something that's backed by XYZ person who is pretty credible in this space. Again, really helpful for that promotion side of things to where you can get links to this, you can turn these um, quotes into some cool graphics. So here's an example of that. Um, essentially that reciprocity factor where Brian took the time out of his day to give us a quote here or to actually review the study to run through it and give us some feedback. And then we took the time to promote him. So we took the time to create some simple graphics here for social uh, ones that were also placed within the article itself so that if anyone's kind of linking back to it, there's again, cool quotes that they can reference and link to that increases the potential to earn more backlinks. Um, you know, reciprocity is really key in this stage, obviously. Everyone wants a link and, uh, you know, they want to link and share articles that praise them. It's just human nature, right? Like if someone mentions you in a cool article or an interview, your first instinct is probably to share that with everyone, right? So that's what we want to foster with some of this is uh, really making the shareability of your study very high. And that comes with uh, getting those subject matter experts in there doing uh, what's right for them and helping benefit them in the long term. Cool, now this section here is gonna be that long form content pillar piece. And so this is really gonna be your hub for driving those links, press mentions, engagement, all that sort of stuff. And what we wanna keep in mind here is really counterintuitive to traditional SEO in that driving uh, the driving force here is not keywords. And so don't force ranking for a specific keyword if uh, you can, then that's great, but it's really not the goal with this piece of content. This is a little bit more on the content marketing side with those huge secondary benefits of SEO. So we don't necessarily want to try to to rank here for you know link building or anything like that. That's not that's not our goal with this article. Our goal with this article is to drive more brand awareness, direct links back to us, as well as referral traffic. We know that this is not the search intent of someone searching for a link building, right? They're, they're looking for a guide, they're looking for steps, all those sorts of things that this can offer them. And so we're not trying to force that into an article that is just not enjoyable to read. We want this article to read like a really in-depth, engaging piece of content that folks are actually hooked in and that they wanna learn more about. And so that's gonna be that long form content pillar piece here. Again, this is gonna be your full on hub to where you're gonna to link to this to all the journalists that you promote to, to anyone that you share on social media with, all those kind of things. So you wanna make sure this piece is really well done. It's got custom images and design. It's got those subject matter expert quotes to spark kind of sharing and virality. You wanna make sure this piece is bolstered with a lot of kind of custom elements in there and not just sort of a block of text. 
In terms of promotion channels, this is sort of where we're getting into the, the latter half of how you actually start to share this around, how you actually start to build some of the links here. And again, here's an example of what that piece or what that rather uh, finalized design image looks like. So just something that's really clean, really sleek. People can see the data. They can also see obviously your brand here. There's a citation to the study itself. Um, that's gonna really help with the sharing and virality. So especially if people are sharing these images, they're linking to them in a study or a piece of content of their own, you can do things like reverse image search to make sure that folks are giving you proper credit. So that's one really key factor here is making your images very consistent and distinct. Again, some people are gonna pull these images and not link back to you, just kind of human nature. Sometimes people might forget or they might do it on purpose, whatever it is. Uh, with these images, you'll be able to reverse image search and then actually identify those sites. And then again, reach out to them, get those links placed, et cetera. But your main promotional channels here are gonna be pretty similar to what you did earlier. So Twitter, LinkedIn, tag all your uh, interviewed social media or your uh, subject matter experts there. Um, they're gonna help, again, share that around their own audience. The more eyes they can get on that, the better, the more people are likely to link to it. So it's a really good indirect way of building a lot of good links. Things like a Reddit, um, you know, subreddit for your given niche can be really interesting. Folks like to engage on stuff in there. Uh, Hacker News or Growth Hackers, if you're in sort of that tech space as a whole, really great place to post this. You'll get people that are pretty engaged in that community uh, that have good connections and are willing to kind of share this around. Again, newsletters, if you have your own, are fantastic. Really good way to promote this and create kind of a series of content here around this. Really great way to build some links, then also sponsoring any niche ones can be a really big impact on the link building side of things. Uh, having a site pop up, another really good one if you've got traffic to your site already, you can just create a really quick kind of like banner pop up or a, a sidebar that shoots in and essentially share some of that data just right off the top so that people can kind of click into it, they'll see it really quickly, they'll be able to sort of share that data around. Uh, the last two here are going to be around those image citations, reverse image search, like I mentioned, and then lastly, cold pitching. This is going to be where you're, you're going back to that initial list of those journalists, media owners, bloggers, you know, site managers, things like that from the SparkToro research, and you're cold pitching heavily uh, the content that you have just created. And when you're cold pitching a lot of this, what you want to do is focus around that value proposition of it being data that they haven't seen before and that they'll likely be able to utilize. So you don't want to directly ask them for a link. You don't want to say, hey, can you link to this article here? Generally speaking, that's not going to generate too great of results if you're doing that on sort of the first touch email. What you want to focus on for that first touch email is going to tend to be just a broad scale approach to sharing that data. So just a quick couple bullet points. We all are busy. We've all got you know crammed inboxes. We just want to make that really simple and say, hey, you know, I know you covered this topic already. Here's three cool unique data points we found after surveying X, you know, 500 different people in XYZ niche. And then just list those data points and say, can I send you the raw data or can I send you the data the spreadsheet, whatever it is. Uh, that's going to be a really good foot in the door there to where you're actually building a genuine relationship with someone and you're not just kind of trying to extort them from a link side of things. People can feel that. We've all seen those spammy emails around link building. So I don't even mention that in your initial email there. Really make it about the data and about saying, hey, you cover these topics a lot. Like, I think you'll find this interesting and here's that data to back it up. That's really gonna increase the you know open rates, the response rates, the actual like link placement rates that you get at the end. So that's really what I'd recommend here. Uh, a good example of this is Content, Content Marketing Institute. So one of the links we landed here, one of the first links we landed uh, was simply doing that exact method there of uh, going to someone on Content Marketing Institute, a journalist there who wrote um, almost exclusively about the link building side of things, sending them a quick email saying, hey, here's the cool data. Here's what we found. Thought you might find it interesting. Here's that raw data set and a link to it. Go check it out. Um, they, they loved it. They were really curious about it and they ended up writing uh, a pretty cool article here about you know the basics of link building and then included our data within that. Um, so it's a really cool way to just build relationships long term too. So now, now you've got that relationship you can leverage in the future, right? And you can say, hey, I published another one about this or I recently updated it. Feel free to check it out or I'd like to you know get a quote from you to share on socials. There's really cool ways that you can foster this for the long term and treat this as an ongoing exercise that you do versus you know just going into it with a mindset of, I'm gonna just spam people and ask them a link to it. 
usually you're just going to not see good results from it. And if you're investing this much time and effort, you want to make sure that it's paying off. Cool. Jenna, I don't know if there's any other questions or anything. Uh, feel free to jump in if so. And if not, I can kind of cover the last few link strategies here beyond the, you know, digital PR and the things. Um, we have one question. Uh, someone wants to know if you can go deeper into um, how to get more survey responses by sponsoring niche newsletters. Yeah, absolutely. Really good question. So in terms of sponsoring niche newsletters, you can use Spartoro a little bit for this, but I also just recommend looking at kind of popular folks in your space, kind of influencers, et cetera, and seeing what sort of newsletters do they have currently? Uh, what is the sort of audience metrics of those are gonna be really the key factor here. So don't necessarily look for newsletters with the most kind of subscribers or total amounts. Those are generally speaking broader newsletters as a whole. Um, they're going to be more expensive to sponsor. Ones that are a little more niche within that like a thousand to 5,000 range tend to be the best for this as they're pretty cheap to sponsor and you might even be able to strike a deal where you don't pay anything to sponsor them and you give them something for free in exchange or you help promote them if you're a larger brand potentially you can help promote them on different socials within that article you could do kind of a mutual value exchange um, so there's a really cool way to do that it's just identifying those folks and kind of striking up that conversation again if you've got a small budget there try to go in with a value-based approach and uh, try to get some of their own advice for the article itself and then have them help promote it. If you've got a little bit of a larger budget, you can kind of play around with sponsoring different newsletters there. But we really like that strategy as a whole as you're basically just tapping into other people's audiences. It ends up being cheaper most of the time than uh, doing like a bunch of ads for the long term or like trying to pay directly for a survey response to given people. You're just gonna find better results there as a whole. And again, that'll tie a little bit into how you structure the survey. So make sure that the survey is like 10 questions or less. It's really down to those, those key questions that you wanna hone in on. So that again, the time and money you're directly investing in these is uh, not just gonna lead to a bunch of people bouncing. So that's, that's what we recommend on the newsletter front is really focus on those kind of small to medium sized ones. Um, unless you've got a large budget and you're looking to do a massive survey that's more broad, you can obviously target stuff that's a little more broad.